Hello and welcome to this service for the last Sunday after Trinity. Here we are next uh, week, we're, we're moving towards what will be All Saints and then the countdown to Advent. So the year is really working its way through now. But of course this weekend we get the extra hour in bed. The Lord be with you and also with you. Father, you are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image, and places in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law, and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice mercy and peace. As we watch for the sign of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And the collect for the last Sunday after Trinity. Blessed Lord, you have caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 to 46. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert of the law, in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. When the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, how is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's often said, and to be fair, in most cases it's true, that a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. Jesus, as we know, was a carpenter by trade, from a rough part of Israel, namely Galilee. He hadn't, it seems, received a formal education, at least not to the level that probably many of his opponents had. They did their best to test him, and also at times to catch him out in issues involving theirs and his Jewish faith and tradition. The expert in Jewish law who tested Jesus with the question, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? may have been showing some respect though. Jewish scholars and teachers, perhaps like the legal expert who asked Jesus this question, would challenge one another to summarise or catch the essence of the law of, of Moses in as few words as possible. There are 613 commandments in the law of Moses. To define the greatest of them in a sentence or two was not only a great intellectual challenge, it was also a deeply spiritual one. We Christians often interpret the law of Moses in strict legal terms, or we understand that that's how the Jews of Jesus' day did as if they were a dry set of rules. But they were much more than that. They were a way of life, a godly way of life. 
Of course, some people may well have treated him in a very narrow and evil way. And Jesus clashed with people like that. All faiths are people who make the mistake of over-focusing on the externals of their religion. Perhaps it's a mistake we can all fall into from time to time. We are, after all, only human. And all religions are vulnerable to human weaknesses. The response that Jesus gave, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it, love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. It was not challenged because it was entirely in keeping with Jewish law and teaching. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 25 to 28, we get a slightly different take on the same question. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. Love is at the heart of Jewish law and faith as it is in Christianity. It's at the heart of all genuine religious feeling and thought. Loving God with our whole being means that we should love our neighbours and ourselves because God loves us. That's why Jesus linked the two by saying the second is like it. Jesus lived out this in his humanity. Good religion has to be humane. Amen. Now let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us be thankful for God's goodness. Almighty God, we pray for your church, that we may recognise and celebrate all that we share with people of other faiths, our love of God, our love of one another, our common humanity. We pray for all who live and work in the spirit of kindness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your world, for its nations and peoples. We pray for the people of the United States as the presidential election draws close. And for the peoples of Nigeria, Belarus and Thailand. And for all people who struggle for their human rights and dignity to be recognised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own nations, for our own nation, as many regions and governments enter into the three tier restrictions. We pray for all who are struggling at this time with fears for their livelihoods, loved ones and their health. And we give you thanks for our National Health Service and for all carers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. May they know your hope and comfort in their troubles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died, trusting them to the promise made by Jesus to prepare a place for them in his Father's house, your eternal home. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So again, I wish you well for the week ahead. Hope you enjoy your extra hour in bed if, that, if, you, if uh, you feel like a lie in and um, of course don't forget to move the clocks they've already had it move them back of course yes. it's Sunday morning or well, in fact I'm speaking to you on Saturday afternoon <laughs> peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless you. Take care. Amen.